uh, work in terms of input from West and involvement from West in terms of game planning, game management, etc. Yeah, I think uh, West will still have a huge impact. Uh, uh, we've talked a bunch, obviously, throughout the season. And then even this situation, I don't expect any of that to change. Obviously, he won't be in the physical presence every day. But um, our whole staff has a whole the communication piece of it. Um, so I'm sure we'll get a lot of feedback from West heading into the games, into practices. We spoke at length this morning um, uh, over the phone, sort of thing and things, ideas that he wants to do and continue for us to emphasize. So I don't think much will change besides him just not being here and doing those face to face conversations. Okay. Yeah, he's feeling okay. Obviously, uh, we know about this virus and, and you know, didn't really expect it or anything like that. It was just kind of something that came about this morning and this testing and um, he let me know and, you know, having the support of him and Tommy to put me in this position, um, you know, uh, means a lot to me. But yeah, he's feeling okay and uh, we look forward to uh, getting him back when the, when the time is right. Yeah, that'd be my first time. And then you touched on it, obviously, the G League experience. And you look at our staff as a whole. You know, you got Jay Boo, who's been a head coach in the G League. Mike Miller, who's done that and also been running his own team with the Knicks. Uh, Ryan Richmond. Um, so we have a ton of experience in this. You know, while I'm you know, doing a lot of the responsibilities of the head coach, uh, I'll be relying on those guys a ton, just like Wes does with all of us, you know, sort of thing. And that's what I told the group this morning. I told the players the same sort of thing. Uh, we got to keep growing in the same direction. You know, there's no excuse, no reason for us to not keep pushing forward. And that's what Wes would want. What do you would demand? Can you kind of delineate for those of us who have known um, how your job's going to shift? Now, obviously, it's, it's your call and everything like that. But in terms of game prep and everything, will you be focused on your job and the head coach's job? Obviously, Wes can still do that kind of remotely. But how are your responsibilities? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm not sure how much, you know, people always say, you know, when you move over six inches, you know, how much it changes sort of thing. I think some of the in game decisions or suggestions that we as a staff make to him and he's got to think about on the fly, uh, maybe some of that part of it, but I'm not sure yet in terms of the workflow, um, but I have the utmost tr uh, trust and confidence in our whole group. I'll be, as I said, relying on those guys a ton in terms of the opponent stuff, where we're at. And the biggest thing is just, uh, as I mentioned, just keeping this ship going forward, you know, sort of thing. We've been fortunate to win a couple of home. We have six games left on this home stand. And uh, we want to take it one game at a time and just try to ma maximize each day. How much has the coaching staff been impacted? Obviously, you guys have been in and out with players and everything, but have you been leaning on how the guys maybe to do stuff from remote and zooming them in? Like, what's it been like for you guys this past couple of weeks? It's, it's honestly, uh, it's just a daily figure out roles, responsibilities as guys go down or out for any period of length of time. And just like we always tell the players is, you know, we don't know who we have each day, but next man up, you know, sort of thing. So we find out amongst our staff, things change from hour to hour, game to game. Um, and as long as Wes and the players are getting what they want, what they need to give us the best chance to perform well, that, that's the biggest key. Uh, Wes has been in this position for a bit, a couple of them, Denver, because of the most recent. Uh, has he given you any advice yet? Yeah, for sure. You know, the one thing, uh, there's so many great qualities about Wes uh, as a person, as a coach, is he was like, you know, do it your way. Do it the way you believe in that. I, I follow that lead in terms of like, I have to be myself. I'm not going to try to be Wes and, um, but nothing's going to change how we do things and how we work and how we prepare um, sort of thing. It's something I believe strongly in, and he's kind of instilled that from day one here as the head coach, and uh, I'm just going to follow his lead in that sense. But I'm very comfortable and confident in the role. Uh, I prepared for this, and obviously not the ideal situation in, the, in terms of how I want to go about doing it, but uh, it's, it's the world we live in right now. So uh, I know Wes has a ton of confidence in me and our staff, and he messaged you all of us this morning along with Tommy. So, um, you know, we had a great practice today. The guys went into it. And uh, we look forward to carrying over to shoot around tomorrow and hopefully playing a good game tomorrow night. Yeah, how did things go? I, I assume you ran practice like, uh, like what normally? Yeah, for sure. And again, like even when he's here normally, he give, delegates a ton of responsibility amongst the staff. And I didn't want to change any of that today uh, as our group as a whole, getting an opportunity to players to hear our voice, what we're doing, how we're emphasizing things, how we're teaching things. It's part of our growth and development too as a, as a staff and individually as coaches um, sort of thing. So we just kind of built off that today. And the guys had a, a great attention to our detail and great concentration. So hopefully it'll lead to good things as we move forward. Uh, how's Brad doing? I didn't see him out there. Was there anyone else that you uh, Brad's just still, he's still in protocol, again, day to day, you know, sort of thing. And we'll, we get updates each day as it comes, sort of thing. So, uh, but other than that, everybody else was, uh, you know, at practice and attended. And, you know, as we talked about earlier in the conversation, like things change quickly in this league, whether it's COVID, uh, injuries, things pop up, uh, personal matters and stuff. So uh, we've had a great approach to it up you know, up until this point, and we look forward to uh, continuing that starting tomorrow. How well did you and 
sweat know each other before the fire here? Um, you know, it's funny, Josh, you asked that, like, I wouldn't say super tight, but in a weird way, uh, despite being in different conferences a lot of uh, the last couple of years, is uh, just constant conversation throughout the season when we played each other. Uh, in the off season, we'd spend a ton of time talking ideas, philosophies, concepts, uh, and then probably really all came together. We've got a chance to go to uh, Tokyo and do BWB Japan together. Uh, Evie was with him, and uh, it was such a great experience um, just for both of us to, you know, bond, spend time together. And I think that's when it really kind of all came together. Us, when uh, you know, it's funny we were talking this morning about it, and people say that you know he was deserving of the job uh, here. I think that so much more is that he, he earned it. You know, sort of thing. I think it kind of goes hand in hand, and happy that he's gotten this opportunity. I'm very fortunate and lucky to be on the staff with him, um, and to be given this chance. And you know, I just want to take it one day at a time as we move forward here, not overthink it. You know, I keep the main thing, the main thing as we push forward. What, what year was this? This BWB Japan. Oh man, tough questions here, Josh. Man, uh, I'm gonna say 2018, 2019, maybe somewhere right in there. Um, if my recollection is correct, but. Hopefully there's no pictures uh, from it. But you, you two had interacted a bit before that, at least. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot during the season, a lot during the off season, whether it be at summer league, uh, catching up, talking uh, different things. Um, you know, I've had great respect from them from afar, even though we hadn't worked together. Um, as you guys know, in your relationships across the league, is that how people talk about him as a person and uh, to see it uphand. And I, I knew how co good of a coach he, he is uh, from a distance, but to see it every day daily. Um, Really fortunate just to continue to learn and grow myself. How valuable were these practices for keeping you through the Yeah, each day is really, especially with our schedule. Uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, it's been hard uh, to do shoot arounds, practice. So each time we get these moments, and one of the things we've tried to emphasize amongst the whole group, TB and Rui are just a big part of it as they're working their way back in, is just match whether we're doing a film session or walking through something, there's always something we can get out of it. You know, sort of thing. It doesn't need, mean that we have to pound them for an hour. We got to be on the court. We can take those types of things. And I thought days like for our whole group today, just to kind of reconnect a little bit after an off day yesterday. We haven't had, I don't know, the last time we had two days off in between games, I guess maybe before uh, Christmas, you know, which was a scheduling day more than it was, you know, set up that way for us. Um, you know, just kind of learn and grow from it. And we had a really good day and it was about us, you know, sort of thing. And kind of clean up some things on both sides of the ball. And uh, again, We'll see what tomorrow brings. But I think the effort and the concentration that was there today, if we have that type, we'll give us a chance most nights. All right, Coop. How, how did you get uh, start to focus on that side of the ball? Yeah, it was really a conversation with Wes that he had amongst our whole group you know, in the off season leading into uh, the job and roles and responsibilities. It wasn't something he delegated. We don't have coordinators or anything like that. We're basketball coaches at the end of the day. So while, well, you know, it may seem like I'm more involved on the defensive side, our, across our whole staff, everybody, as I mentioned, Wes is super open-minded to all the suggestions and ideas. And we're trying to figure out each day what's best for this group, what gives us the best chance to win each night. And uh, that's how Wes has always a approached it. And that's how I continue to do it even today with our group. Uh, I don't have all the answers. I told the guys this and um, rely heavily on, on, on our players and the staff. And we're going to go about it uh, the way that Wes has. And we'll give ourselves a chance each night. We come out, we compete. We're, we're fully detailed and try to go out and execute. Um, uh, I feel quite good about where our chances will lie. All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom for just a few questions. And we're going to start with Neil. Hey, Coach, is this something that you guys had discussed previously that, OK, in a situation where Wes is unavailable, that you would be the person to step up as acting? Or is it just something that came about on the fly once you got the news? Yeah, something honestly that just came about on the fly. I think uh, despite what the virus has done, uh, it was just something that, you know, we're just being prepared. And I think Wes has given us all those roles and responsibilities to no matter what. However, if it did were to happen, um, that I would get an opportunity to do it. But it wasn't something that we discussed in full. Uh, just once he uh, he told me this morning is where he was at. Uh, you know, he told me and obviously Tommy talked to me and they gave me the most trust and confidence in myself to go out there and ready to help lead these guys. And nothing really changes much more than that. I'll be moving over one chair. But again, we'll be doing it collectively like we've done here from the start and just try to keep building the pace that uh, Wes has laid. And what's what was kind of the overall emphasis in practice today that you hope to carry over into shoot around tomorrow? 
Yeah, I would say the biggest thing for us defensively is just kind of the more protecting the paint thing that's kind of hampered us for a little while now. Um, the individual component part of it and just cleaning up some things in terms of that side of the ball, in terms of our pick and roll coverages. The stuff, honestly, we get we do daily. It's just without the practice time and be able to do it in a live setting, it's hard to duplicate. We were able to do some of that today. And then just the uh, offensive part of it is the spacing, you know, sustaining our play, you know, moving without the ball, uh, trying to get the ball into the paint, which I also, you know, in terms of our shooting numbers, we tend to shoot the ball better as most teams do when the balls touch the paint. So whether that's off a cut, off a roll, off a drive, emphasizing those types of things. And the guys were good about their push today. So hopefully it will be the good things for us tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. And we'll take the last question from Christos. Hello, Coach. How are you today? Hey, Christos. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Coach, for you to have a, such a deep team and with uh, Rui and Thomas back, and tra back on track, how easy make your or make your job on the floor? I'm sorry. How much easier has it made it? Yes. Uh, yeah, they're both obviously uh, really good players and they've played big roles here. I think we've seen it really since he's been back, right? He has a great, he's a physical player, even on the offensive end of the floor, is cutting and moving without the ball, um, you know, sort of thing. And as we're getting him up to speed uh, with more and more of the offense and defensive things, he's picking things up quickly. And then we saw it with TB the other night, obviously first game, it had been a while, is just to get out there. His talk brings great energy to our group, you know, sort of thing. And there hasn't been, despite those guys not playing a ton of minutes, a lot for them to catch up on. But it's going to be a process as we build them up, you know, sort of thing. But we're excited that they're both back and uh, we look forward to continuing to get them uh, out there on the floor performing with our group. Have your paths ever crossed before, before this? And if not, what are your impressions of, of group having? Uh, from my understanding, I don't think we crossed paths before. Uh, if we have, it's been a while ago. Um, but um, my impression of him now is, you know, just chill, laid back. You know, he engaged in, like, you know, the defense as, as much as possible. Uh, I got to say he's very observant. Um, and he's been good so far. You know, uh, for me, just him being new, uh, pretty much all the coaching staff being new. Uh, I'm new. Uh, so everything's been going well for, so far for me. Uh, I've, I would say just the way practice goes or just the way things are being ran, you know, because it's just, you know, the way he wants to uh, run it. He, Wes is always, you know, engaged in, in, in the practice, you know, stopping and stuff, you know, getting us teaching you know, a lot. Uh, and today was just more of just, you know, we just work on defense, you know, offense, no script. Uh, more normal stuff uh, than what Wes would do. <laughs> um, I haven't really thought about that question. You know, I just I'm just here to play. You know, we we still learning each other. Uh, I know he's, he he doesn't have all the answers, so we don't have all the answers. So he he's always, which I like like. Since day one, he's always always engaging with us, you know, trying to get the, you know, the feel feel or like just get to know us a little bit more. I know you're uh, close to Brad, and you've been requesting to get back in the protocol. And just, uh, yeah, I'll, I always text and call the joke with him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so from, from what you can sense, just how's he feeling with having to go back? Uh, I mean, I would say he, he's doing pretty good. You know. He, you know, we, we, he was in this position once before, you know, and I think he discussed it last interview. You know, he he, he has, uh, he was blessed, you know, to have things in his house, you know, to keep him prepared, you know, to, whenever he do come back. Uh, and I think he's, he's he's mentally, you know, just refreshed. Uh, and just, I think he's ready to get back at it again. Back to uh, one three straight game. The first two were really close. The third one, not as close, but a little bit more comfortable. Do you feel like that was a step in the right direction? Like, uh, maybe you guys are moving forward and you still more comfortable with it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I feel like that was what, our first three in a row win since we were 10-3. and You know, so it's been a while since we, we had that little winning streak. Um, and we want to just continue that, uh, you know, keep playing for each other. 
um, and just keep moving the ball out there. You know, the more we can share the ball, you know, the more people feel, you know, confidence and, you know, uh, feel a, a part of, of just being out there. When it comes to you guys have some elements that you think are good, right? Like the three point defense is your main skill, and also you have Gasser who blocks quite a few shots. How do you guys put it all together? Like, what, what kind of is missing in between? Uh, in, in between that's missing is just, I feel like um, our effort as far as one on one defense, um, we got to make a big emphasis uh, on that part. We got to be able to sit down, you know, guard people. Uh, not let them get into our paint where we don't rely on our help as much. Uh, I feel like that's that's the big area that we need to get uh, improve on. What are your uh, early impressions of both Rui and uh, Thomas Bryant when you played against them, but now you're finally in position? Uh, but now they're just hungry to get back out there. You know, I, I played with TB in LA for, for a little bit. Um, and I, and I know what he can do, you know, and then played against uh, Rui. And I know what he can do. So like, they're just ready to get back out there, get into a rhythm, you know, and just, just play. None of them guys love the game. Uh, and then today uh, in practice, you know, you can just see the energy, you know, and them, them get back into their self and they, and they flow the game. Obviously, there's a lot of attention placed on him. Do you Anything you want to clarify or, or explain? Uh, no, you know, things happen. You know, we, we, we've, you know, moved on from it. You know, uh, we've talked about it, you know, so it's nothing, nothing more to talk about uh, than what happens in the locker room, you know, it stays in the locker room. So, you know, unfortunately, y'all got a little piece of that, but, uh, <laughs> But no, no. We at the end of the day, you know, we we you know, we brothers, you know, you know, things happen. You know, we we get over it. You know, uh, and we you know, my for me, forgiveness is is a big part. You know, of of, of my routine, my game. You know, and and the way it, like I move. So you know that it happened so quick. You know, I end up forgetting about it the next night. I mean, the next day. So uh, it it wasn't it shouldn't have been nothing. So you know, we 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 good. All right, KCP. Let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with a question from Neil. Hey, KCP. Um, as a veteran on this team, is there any extra onus for you to kind of speak up and practice and try and help Coach Delaney along, or is it kind of just business as usual? Uh, yeah, just be a little bit more vocal. Uh, with uh. In, the, in practice, you know, we we have that type of relationship with the coaches, you know, where they, they look for, you know, uh, our opinion as well, you know, what works, you know, because we are on the court and, you know, doing all the playing. So we they want to know what what we see. Um, no, it's, it's very helpful uh, just to have that dialogue with the coaches. And I know it was a couple games ago, but did you call bank on that three late in the OKC game? No. You didn't see my prayer hands. I, I did see that was gonna be with your reaction, just kind of uh, like yeah, that. that. That was thank God for that one going in. You know, I uh, I think I missed what the first four threes before that one, um, and then when I shot it, it, it didn't feel like it was going in. So you know, the bank is open. You know, so it it just went in, and I just you know thank God for that one going in. The pictures came out good. Appreciate it, KCP. Wow. <laughs> we'll finish up with Chris Dose. Hey, KCP. Hope you're doing well. Uh, in that three-game winning streak for you guys, how many steps forward on defense do you feel that you made? Um, we we made a uh, we made some some big steps on on the defensive end. You know, as far as like keeping the uh, the paint, you know. Uh, uh, protecting the paint, you know, protecting the three ball. Uh, I just feel like that's improving, but you got to improve on our one-on-one -on -one defense. Like I, uh, I said earlier, uh, I think that's the biggest thing that that's missing in our defense. And also sh uh, showing uh, Danny Avdia made that progress on defensive end and become on one of the most important parts of your defensive effort. What did you, how, how proud do you feel about his progress as your, 
as a veteran, as a teammate as well? Um, I'm very proud, you know, from where we, you know, we started and then what we, you know, kind of like slipped into and then just us getting back to where we were when we started defensive-wise, you know, I, I, I'm i proud. You know, we we still learning uh, and it's, it's learning on the, on, on the go. Uh, and we switch things game by game, you know, depending on our matchup and we, we got to get it going. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very proud for our guys, you know, when we come to practice, you know, we, we focus. Now, when we're watching film, we focus on the defensive end because uh, the offense is going to come as long as we move the ball. Um, but that, that focus on the defensive end that the team have and I have, you know, it, it's great. And I'm, I'm very proud. Thank you very much. Keep up. Thank you. And then KCP, just one last question from inside the room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when we see some of these young guys like Benny or you know, Pittsburgh, all these staffers, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them often say that you're one of the people that they can be a leader or who, who is kind of really giving of his knowledge. What's it like for you now? I mean, you're, you're still a young man. I don't mean like yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I like it. You know, I, I like, you know, I've been in the game, what, nine years? Uh, and then for what I've learned from coming from Detroit, you know, going to L.A., and then down here, uh, I've been in most of the situations uh, these guys have been in or, or going through now. Uh, and my knowledge, you know, and what I know, and just, just giving it to them is, it, you know, it's, it's good for me. You know, I, I, I feel like they they listen, you know, they take it in, whatever it is, you know, and apply it. And it, it's good for me. You know, it makes me feel like I'm doing something, you know, as a leader, you know, and just being there for them when they need it. Uh, I can I can remember my rookie year. You know, I had Chauncey Billups. I had Tayshaun Prince. I had Josh Smith. You know, then we go to. I had Rasheed Wallace as the coach in Detroit. Um, a lot of old school, you know, vets that has been through the game, you know, through the wire. Uh, also, you know, in LA, Brian, um, Rondo, you know, uh, I want to say who else? It's another guy that was on the team. I played with Isaiah Thomas. You know, uh, I played with a bunch of guys, you know, that has been through situations. Um, and know how to get through them uh, and just leaning on them uh, and just, you know, picking their brain here and there. You know, that was that was good for me. You know, just have that wisdom that was given to me. The other night, there was really cool moment. Beginning of the second quarter, Thomas Bryant came in. You seemed very excited. You were raising the mm -hmm. and There was a lot of support for giving him. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I about to say he was out um, when I first got here, but you know, just seeing him back on the floor, you know, that's, that's that's great because I'm pretty sure he's been itching to be back out there. So just finally seeing him back out on the floor, you know, it's just really exciting just seeing somebody go through the process of being injured and having that long road of recovery, getting back out there and just seeing that. I mean, it always brings a smile to my face because we're there coming back to something that they love. And seeing TB be able to experience that, it was a real big thing for me because, you know, I always, I always take, you know, toll of just like seeing things like that I always was real big. Like seeing Clay come back too was a real big thing. So Clay had came back, now TB back, you know, it was just, it was real, I would say, I would say, I can't even think of the word for it. You know, I'm pretty sure he was excited. The energy was through the roof. Everybody was ready for him to come back. And it was only right that he came back and shot a three in the corner. <laughs> so that was, a, that was, it was real, it was real good for us. You know, it was real good for him. He was real happy. You know, he parked in front of me in the parking garage. So I had to wait for him to leave, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, you guys are in the same position. Obviously, uh, there's clearly some natural competition on the team, but it seems like for you, it's kind of like the same thing. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, nothing can beat being a good teammate because at the end of the day, positive energy throughout the team is the best thing we can possibly have on the floor. It's going to help us on the bench. It's going to help us coming into the game. It's going to help the crowd too. You know, just seeing a lot of negative energy on the sideline is one thing that can really put everything in motion of going downhill. And that's something I've never wanted. And I always try to make sure I don't bring any negative energy to the sideline. So I just try to stay as positive. I can't even talk. I just try to stay as positive as I can you know, throughout the stretch of the game because it can get real tough. We have, you know, just like one negative thing go wrong and then boom, it's like a domino effect. Everything bad just happens. I guess on a related note, um, you know, with some of the players in the rotation now, uh, it seems like whoever's playing the best based on matches plays in the fourth quarter. Sometimes you're in the fourth quarter, sometimes you are. Mm -hmm. What's your approach uh, knowing that aspect of the roster? Really just staying ready. You know, you never know what the lineup is going to be one night. You know, I might be starting and then I might be sitting for the rest of the game. It just depends on how, you know, the game plan goes with the coaches and whatnot. So at any point in time, I'm always ready for when my name is called and I'm going to come out there and give 110 percent. And whether I'm out there for two minutes or, you know, for a whole quarter or anything like that, I'm going to come out and I'm going to play hard. That's my main thing. Thing you know, I, I told you guys at the beginning of the year, I really don't worry about playing time. I just come out and do what I can to provide for the team on the floor to help us get the win at the, at the end of the day. What's, uh, what's Pat Delaney like? Uh, Pat Delaney, I mean, you know, he's a real good coach, you know. Um, day in, day out, he comes in and he has high energy. I don't think he has high, more energy than um, JB. <laughs> you know, but other than that, you know, he comes in and he's ready to work and he's ready to get better. You know, he's a defensive mindset a coach. You know, he talks about offense here and there, but other than that, he comes in and he does what's best for the team and puts us in the right position to where we can succeed on the floor. What's it like that to have Ruby back? Oh, it's great. You know, it's good to have my guy Ruby back, you know, the Black Samurai. <laughs> uh, you know, I tell him every day, you know, just cracking jokes and certain things like that just to, you know, show my appreciation that he's back for sure. You know, I know it was, it was a long road ahead of him coming back with whatever he was dealing with. And I tried to make sure, you know, that I was there for him and any other guy on the team was trying to do the same thing, you know, just have his back and be in his ear to let him know that we're here for him. That's the main thing. Whenever he was coming back, we're going to welcome him back with open arms. And that's what we did. So having him back on the floor, you know, it's really exciting. You know, having him, TB, everybody back on the floor to where we all got a full roster again, it's crazy because we got the full roster now. We just got to get the coaches in line and the staff and stuff. So, you know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you this before, but do you guys talk, do you and Ruby ever talk anime at all? I think we talked anime maybe one time, and that was when Robin Lopez was here. That was last year <laughs> when I had first got here. Uh, and that was the first time I heard Robin Lopez say more than three words. So um, <laughs> so other than that, we hadn't really talked about it anymore. He commented on my Dragon Ball tattoo, I think, when he first seen it. But that was pretty much the only time we talked about it this year. I'm just wondering what Ruby thinks of your love for Naruto and Dragon Ball. Uh, I mean, if he, if he doesn't like that I love it, he's going to have to like it sooner or later. <laughs> All right, Gaff, we'll, we'll switch over to Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Daniel. Um, speaking about Robin, he had, you know, tried to go, go with the hook shot on you that you kind of sent away. Is that something where playing with him last year, you were like, oh, okay, I know exactly what he's trying to do? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my first year uh, when I was in Chicago, actually, when I had, I had blocked it then when he was here in Washington, and there was guys telling me on Chicago's team that it's rare to see somebody um, block his hook shot. And I was kind of surprised about that because I thought, you know, it was, you know, a shot that was easily able to be blocked or anything like that. But when I got here and seen it in person, I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to block that shot from what I'm seeing, <laughs> you know. So just really just learning, you know, how guys work in the post and being able to, I would say, learn tendencies and play the right way in the post and be like a solid defender down low is the main thing. I always, I told the guys last night, I was like, as long as you don't get me with his off form and hold me off, I'm going to block a shot. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to jump as high as I can to try to throw it out of there. And I mean, it happened um, for, I would say, the last good play that I was in uh, when I uh, last game. It was a real good thing. <laughs> we had a laugh about it after the game and stuff. It was like, it had to be me, huh? It had to be. <laughs> so it was real good, yeah. 
And obviously, you know, between the coaching staff and even Tommy in the front office, you know, everybody's saying, you know, we want to get back to our defense. We want to get back to, you know, the defense you guys were playing at the beginning of the year. Has there been any points of emphasis for you, you know, as the main rim protector paint defense to try and improve in that aspect? I said a conversation we've been having all year is staying out of foul trouble. That's the main thing with me, you know, going for the shots that I can block and really just knowing when I can't go block a shot and just being smarter on defense, moving my feet a lot more and staying out of foul trouble. <laughs> How do you think that process has evolved for you this season and trying to, you know, not pick up those ticky tack fouls? It's been a bit of up and down. I've slipped in some areas when it comes to, you know, getting fouls in like the first five minutes of the game, little things like that. And I really try to key in to those you know, uh, like pay attention to details on certain things on how to keep myself in the game as long as possible without getting the silly fouls and certain things like that. Because there's a lot of guys in the league that manipulate the game and do little things that put big put big men out of position, um, you know, with a sweep through, with, you know, getting big, getting big men in the air and jumping into their body, little things like that. So I just got to learn how to manipulate the game as well on the defensive end you know, and be able to make guys try to shoot over me or just go up and block shots at the at the top, meet them at the rim, just be a solid defender all in general. That's my main thing. So just manipulating the game on the defensive end is one thing that I'm still learning, you know, because there's a lot of guys out here that do a lot of crazy stuff. They get a lot of guys, a lot of fouls. So <laughs> try not to be one of those guys. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Yes, sir. We'll go to Christos. Hey, Daniel, hope you're doing well. Uh, Thomas Bernd is back, so how his presence, Montrez Harrell presents, how he help you to get better as the season goes on? Uh, how does it help me get better? Is that what you're yes. asking? Yes, yes. Um, really just coming out and having crazy energy the first five minutes of the game because, you know, we're back to the three big man rotation like we were last year, so it's going to be shorter stints that we all are on the floor. So really just doing our work early and getting as much as – can you, like I said, I can't even talk today. Oh, God. Getting as much as um, out of it as possible while we're all on the floor. You know, one guy comes in, do his job, have energy, grab rebounds, block shots, you know, navigate the offense, navigate defense, certain things like that. And the next guy is just, you know, the next guy steps up, steps up to the plate and just picks up where the first guy left off. That's my main thing. That's how it was last year. So I'm trying to reiterate that this year, you know. And also, as you are a great speaker. Don't worry about, uh, about that. And also, uh, this season, Bradley Bill is out uh, so far with the health and safety protocol. Do you feel do you feel that you make a step into a bigger role, into a leadership role, be more vocal as well? Um, well, me in general, I feel like I talk too much on the floor anyway. You know, I gotta be the main guy that talks really just to kind of like navigate the defense. Um, but other than that, just stepping into a leadership role, I feel like we all have like our own way of stepping into that leadership role when Brad is going. You know, we're all vocal with each other. We all try to keep each other in the game, keep each other locked in to basically pick up where Brad has left off when it comes to him missing throughout the games. So that being said, we all, I would say, step into a leadership role. Me, myself, I would say, in my opinion, is just being more vocal and trying to keep guys locked in, not letting guys, you know, get in their own head and get frustrated and try to keep as much positive energy out there on the floor as possible and on the bench too, you know, keeping energy um, on the bench, you know, get guys clapping, get guys jumping around on the baseline, little things like that. Um, There's ways that can bring a positive influence to the game to where we can just have fun and play ball, you know. No matter the outcome, we just go out there, and give 110% and have fun doing what we love. Thank you very much. Keep up. And we'll finish up with Wayne. Hey, what's up, Gaffin? Uh, first off, congratulations on the 200 career blocks. Thank you. And speaking of that, uh, you had commented back that when someone said you had more fouls than blocks, you said these are facts with a laughing emoji. Just how <laughs> often um, are you players like mindful of just like little comments like that uh, in this day and age? Uh, I mean, I always see it. You know, there's no way you're not going to see it. You know, it's, yeah, I laugh at most of them. Sometimes it really just grinds my gear. Sometimes I really just, you know, hold back a lot of stuff. It's a lot of things that I want to say that I really can't say because I'll get in trouble. So, you know, I just have to ask myself, what would Jesus do? <laughs> so um, other than that, just seeing the comments and stuff, sometimes, you know, sometimes they really just, you know, add fuel to the fire. It really gets me locked in and motivates me to be better than what I was the night before. That's the main thing because there's a lot of people out there and also, this is a message to everybody, stop gambling on me if you're going to be mad about the outcome of how I play. <laughs> you know, that's the main thing, okay? My mom is a beautiful person. I love her a lot. She is not ugly. Stop gambling on me. Thank you. 
<laughs> um, and lastly, Gaff, with a, a homestand like this, how how is it just to feel, you know, you're in a routine where you don't have to be on the road and travel and can, you know, wake up where you where you're from? Like how how good does that feel to have an eight-game homestand, pretty much? It's amazing. You know, being on the road, it takes a lot out of you. Um, with the traveling, being on the planes, jumping from plane to plane, going from city to city, being in different hotel rooms, different time zones, if you, you know, going from East Coast to the West Coast, little things like that. And especially if, like, you're going to a different altitude, like Denver or Utah, that's even more crazy. But just being home is great, you know. Um, my dogs, they really are driving me insane, so I wouldn't mind a road trip <laughs> sooner or later. But other than that, I love being home, being around my family, being around, you know, just my animals and certain things like that. Just having like my own atmosphere to where I can just sit back and relax. Be like, oh, okay, cool. We don't have to go anywhere no time soon. You know, until one of my dogs come in and they try to eat my food that's on my desk. But um, other than that, you know, the homestand, I've been waiting for this for a while, especially when we was on the road trip um, back last year. You know, mm -hmm. I can say last year now, it was 2021. <laughs> well, uh, back last year or last month, um, when we was on that road stint, it was real tough just, you know, being away from the house. And then when we got back, we didn't know we were, if we were going to play Brooklyn or not. That got canceled, so we were wrong. So it's just, you know, 50-50. Sometimes I like it, sometimes you don't. You know, it's good to get away from family, but it's great to be around family too, especially when the season is coming along and you get overwhelmed with a lot of stuff. You got the right people in your ear at the right time. And they really bring you back down to earth. So being home for sure is one thing that I highly recommend. <laughs>